Hey, what's going on, AP people? We are continuing our series of important court cases, and today we're going to talk about one of the most monumental court cases in U.S. history, Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, also known as the Brown versus Board decision of 1954. So let's get started. Okay, let's talk about some key ideas that you should know that will help understand that will help you understand this decision a little more. We have Jim Crow laws in the South, which are Southern laws that legally segregated individuals based on race. Here's a picture of a bus station in the South, and you can see that there is a separate waiting room for African Americans. And another picture here is a diner. You can see that not only were people segregated within the diner, but also separate entrances as well. So there is a white entrance over here, and a colored entrance over on the right hand side. Okay, Plessy versus Ferguson was a court case from 1896. I do have a video on that in the description that I would encourage you to review to help understand this. This establishes the separate but equal doctrine or the idea that segregation is allowed or legal as long as the facilities are equal, when in actuality these facilities rarely if ever were. And in World War II, we have the Double V Campaign, which stands for Victory Over Fascism and Victory Over Discrimination in the United States. And this was a campaign led predominantly by African Americans. And here are some people who were involved in the Double V Campaign. Definitely know the Double V Campaign. Victory over fascism abroad or, or fascism during World War II and victory over discrimination at home. So after World War II, many African Americans are going to return home wanting to end discrimination in the United States. Okay, key people, we have Oliver Brown, who is the lead plaintiff, although this is a class action lawsuit involving many different individuals. So he is simply the, the lead plaintiff, although this combines several different court cases into one. Thurgood Marshall was a lawyer for Brown, he worked for the NAACP, and he becomes a future justice on the Supreme Court, the first African-American to serve in the Supreme Court. And here is Thurgood when he was on the Supreme Court. And Earl Warren, pictured here, is the chief justice of the Supreme Court during this time. And this court is often known as the Warren Court. Look for a video on the Warren Court. Lots of key decisions are made during the Warren Court, which lasts from 1953 to 1969. Okay, to understand the Supreme Court decision, let's take a look at this map. It, every state that is in red required segregation in schools. So it was illegal for African Americans to attend schools or w with white people in the states that are in red. The states that are green did not allow segregation. Okay, in a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court reversed the Plessy versus Ferguson decision. The Supreme Court does not often reverse prior court cases, but they do here. And they say that the separate but equal facilities were inherently unequal, that segregation in schools is not constitutional. They tell states that they must desegre desegregate schools with all deliberate speed, which kind of raises a question, what does that mean exactly? How long is all deliberate speed? It also says that de jure segregation is a violation, and de jure means segregation by government law. So again, the separate but equal is no longer allowed. Okay, let's go to the effects of the court case. Many southern states resisted integration or resisted desegregation, and this policy and this idea is known as massive resistance. And they favored closing down schools rather than desegregating them. So it, it really was not embraced in many areas of the South. The, we see this in, in the Little Rock Nine. Here's a picture of the Little Rock Nine where nine African-American students had to be escorted to school to make sure that they could actually go to Little Rock High School. And we also see this in something called the Southern Manifesto. And these are 99 Southern politicians, 97 of which are Democrats. And they signed a document protesting the Supreme Court's decision. And among these people was Strom Thurmond. And he was a member of Congress for over 50 years. And he wrote the first draft of the Southern Manifesto. And in this document, it says the original Constitution does not mention education. Neither does the 14th Amendment nor any other amendment. The debates preceding the submission of the 14th Amendment clearly show that there was no intent that it should affect the system of education maintained by the state. So the Southern Manifesto and Southern politicians are saying the Supreme Court overstepped its boundaries. They are not happy with the Supreme Court's decision. 
we will see quickly after the Brown versus Board decision that desegregation will begin to focus on public and private facilities as well. So it's not it's no longer just schools. We'll see things like sit ins where African Americans will sit at an all white counter. And that began in North Carolina. We'll see this idea extend to other areas like wait-ins where they would go to different beaches or pools and bowl-ins with bowling alleys. And they would help challenge the discrimination laws in the South. Then we'll see a couple civil rights acts of the 1960s that will help end other forms of discrimination as well, especially when it comes to voting. All right, that's everything you need to know about the Brown versus. Board of Education Supreme Court decision. I hope this video helped. If you have not already, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. Help me spread the word if you could post this on the internet for me on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere else that somebody could watch this who would benefit from this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in this section below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day, guys.